shit until the day I die, and that's a low qual guarantee. Low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team. The Habs are in the finals. This is an informal video. I, I want your take on this. this. Is a conversation piece. I'm sorry. I'm like I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This is February eighth. I mean they win February eighth until the day I die, and that's a low call <sighs> guarantee. I just they were eight two and two when I made that video. Eight two and two. They looked good. Chris Johnson at that time released a statement on Twitter saying that they looked like a juggernaut. And then they spiraled! They were so bad all year! 18th place in the league makes the playoffs because of the way the format is. I don't I'm not mad about the format. They did what they could. I mean, every year there's a team like that. And then Carey Price locks it down. Massive comeback in the first round, sweep in the second, and then a real, real upset in the third. And here we are. They are four wins away from a Stanley Cup. I'm sorry. Guys, I'm so sorry. It does feel destined a little bit, doesn't it? Destined for them to win the Cup. They go down 3-1 in the first round to a Toronto team that's finally going to make it past the first round. This is the best chance they've had in years. There's no Boston, Tampa in their way. Not that they met with Tampa. Hey, fine. There's no, no. They're the favorite. They're the favorite. Like, real favorite. Most models had them an 80-plus percent chance to win that series. Going into game seven, they had like a 70% chance to win. John Tavares goes down, obviously, earlier in the series. But they still go up 3-1 on them. And Montreal just claws their way back. Matthews and Marner are non-existent. You had made an entire franchise now. As Toronto, the, the clock bleeds out in Game 7. Toronto realizes that they might have to blow it up. They don't. They don't. But that's what they start thinking. You have ruined them all over again. And the Habs are chuckling their little dicks off. And they move on to the next round. And this one, still an underdog. But not quite so much. Two hot goaltenders. Both kind of grindy teams. They sweep them. They sweep them. Not only that, they go into the next round, and I'm sitting there going, well, any time a team has swept another team in the past two years, they've gotten wiped out in the next round. Six games. Don't even need seven. And you want to talk about the complaints about the officiating in that series. The complaints were coming from Montreal fans. Vegas, all through these playoffs, has had very kind officiating. And I'm not saying it's rigged or anything like that. It's just the way the cookie crumbled. It sure seemed like they were getting the better of the refs. Montreal didn't even need seven. And here we are. I just, what do, what do we do? What do we do? It's an informal video because I want to know what, you, what, 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 what you're rooting for. I can't. I tried to root for Montreal. I did against Winnipeg. So I was like, bees. Habs final. Let's finally get this. It was going to be the greatest, the greatest finals for the Stanley Cup in my lifetime. I was so excited. And, and we were the weak link. We came up short. We did. But I tried to root for them against Winnipeg. And I went into the game, into the first game, going, all right, Habs. I am not going to wear the jersey, but like, I'm all in on you guys. Let's see it. And then, like, subconsciously, like, I couldn't control it. Anytime something good happened for the Jets or bad to, to Montreal, I cheered. I couldn't help it. I can't. I can't support that team. I can't. Some of you are talking about how the young guns, the young, the young guys are, are a fun story. And they are. But I can't. Because all I can think of is they're going back into our division. And I'm going to hate those guys for the rest of their careers. can't. I want to know who you guys are rooting for. But it feels like they're destined to win a cup this year. Now, destinies have fallen short before. I was just having this conversation. I need to do more research on it. But I wonder how often Cinderella stories actually end with a negative. Right? A Cinderella story all the way to the cup final where they lose. 
I can't remember one like this where they were this heavily considered underdogs in every round. But that's the thing, right? You don't remember them. They just fall off to the side. They came in second place. Why would you even remember? You can probably name the last 10 Stanley Cup victors, but can you name who they played in every single one? It takes a little longer to think about. So Montreal's in the finals. Mark Bergevin, Berg, Bergevin, Bergevin, Berge, he, uh, he gave me a call this morning. They're considering putting me on the cup if I, if, if they do win, uh, because of the video that I made and, uh, how, how, how I just gifted them this. I don't want to take anything away from Montreal. They've had the lucky bounces. The hockey gods have been on their side, but they're still playing a hell of a game. I'm mad because the way they started these playoffs, they benched some of their young guys, and, and and it just didn't seem like they deserved to be there. And then finally the coaching staff wakes up and puts the young guys in, and they're, they're lights out. They play great. Whole series flips on its head. I really... Like, it, it makes you angry. It makes you... You don't want this. Because although we love this sport because it's random, Having a team that wasn't even top half of the league winning the cup kind of makes you go, what's the point of the regular season then? Like, what's the point? More often than not, a team wins the cup that we go, yeah, that team should have won the cup. Right? Tampa last year, obviously the Blues, you went, oof, that's a bit of a surprise. But then you want to talk about the Penguins championships, the Blackhawks championships, the Washington championship. Like, those teams... All very much deserved a cup. Montreal will absolutely deserve this cup if they win it. They will. So I don't want to get bogged down in the, the regular season doesn't matter. Because it does. Because it's hard to make the playoffs. Heavily favored teams often do win. And these runs are rare. They really are. So we should enjoy it. I can't support it. I also can't support it because it's my fault. <laughs> Go ahead and put who you're rooting for down below. Let me know. I just need, I just, this is tough. This is tough titties, guys. Just the toughest of titties. These are rock solid titties. These are, these are if the Easter Island heads had bodies. Those titties. Rock solid. But in happier news, let's talk about the bracket challenge in which whoever named their, their bracket Trent Frederick, I think you ran away with it. And I think you ran away with it because you had Montreal in the finals. None of our brackets are anything to brag about, by the way, guys. A lot of us went with the Bruins, because why wouldn't we? Uh, whoever named it, a little special shout out to the one who named it, Nope. Uh, I, I can't see the username for some reason. I might just be looking at the wrong thing. But whoever named their bracket, nope. Uh, you almost got a perfect anti-bracket. Like, it's opposite almost every th single series. And that might have been the point by saying nope. But damn, if you just swapped that around, you would be winning right now. <laughs> so nice job, Trent Frederick. Uh, it just I, I don't think you can be caught. And uh, second place, I believe, is going to Ellie for Calder 2026. That's a, that's a little inside joke between me and a buddy. Other happy news. So we reached the goal of 100 subscribers in the first season. We crushed it. But really, the biggest goal this channel had and continues to have and we've reached is to build a small community that I can talk to about the team I love because I don't have that around me. I'm, I, there's no one around me that I get to talk sports with. And you guys have just been an absolute blessing. So thank you for that. Now, I've been informed by YouTube that they are changing their setup. And now we'll begin putting ads on videos, even if you're not monetized. Which is crazy to me, because do they need that? Do they need more money? Anyway, so they're going to start making a small amount of money off of my videos while I'm not monetized. I need a thousand subscribers to monetize. And if someone's going to get paid... For me talking about shit to a webcam, it's going to be me. So the new goal is a 1,000. Obviously, that should have always been part of the goal. And, and it was, right? It was always like, well, maybe it can really grow into something. 
But I never want to lose the purpose of what this channel was, which is the community and the enjoyment of the team. And YouTube is a free site for me to post this stuff. So how mad can I really get? But seeing that email and seeing the changes that they were going to make kind of made me go, you don't need to put ads on my stuff. My channel's small. Like, leave it alone for now. And it kind of bugged me. So the goal is to get to the point where the ads are there for a reason, because the channel has grown to that size. I think they're doing it later in the summer. I have to go back and check. All that to say, thank you for the support. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting and being engaged. Some of you have actually shared these on Reddit at times, but I can't tell you how neat of a feeling that is to see someone post your work out there just for people to see. And it just, if, thank you. Just thank you. It means a lot. And it's, it's really cool. Today I am working on an actual different video. This was just me getting on the mic and, and talking about this Habs final that I just still can't really believe is happening. The video I'm working on is a roster breakdown. Players who have signed UFAs, RFAs, people who are close to that UFA or RFA stage, what I think is going to happen. I'm going to try to keep it within the next year or two because then it's going to get real hard to, to guess. And a way too early opening night roster prediction that is guaranteed to be really, really wrong. So let's, uh, let's have some fun with that. If you were already tuned into some of this stuff and you've been looking at it, put in the comments a free agent or two that you'd be really excited for the Bruins to go after. Not one that's currently on the roster, one that like literally is opening up from another team. Go Bruins!